All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Shaq, uh, and welcome to another webinar in this training series from Whisper. So, in terms of the agenda for today, we're going to be talking about distribution lists. Uh, what are those lists? Um, how are they used? Um, how we create those lists? What are the different types of lists? Uh, some of the useful features, and how we manage them. As you can see, I've logged in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the relevant workspace and I'm going to start looking at the existing distribution list that I have um, in the platform. Now, in previous webinars, you may have witnessed basic setup of contacts, templates, and sending out messages in the form of an SMS, email, or rich web content. In today's session, we'll be looking at grouping of these contacts uh, as recipients. And uh, in Whisper terminology, we call such group of recipients a distribution list. So in other words, a distribution list is a group of uh, multiple recipients or contacts to whom a message can be sent. So there we are um, on our workspace menu again. Uh, we're going to start looking at how we create uh, this distribution list uh, in Whisper. But for a start, I'll quickly show you how these distribution lists are used by going into a new message section. And on this simple user interface, we click on the to screen and uh, we get into the address box, the address book uh, interface. And uh, over here, we have the option to look at existing contacts and add them as recipients, or we can pick these distribution lists that must have been created previously, and we can add them to the list. So at this stage, I don't have anybody on that distribution list, but once we create those distribution lists, then you'll be able to see those people as recipients and be able to um, select them to be on the list or take them out of the list as needed. So let's move on. Now, in terms of creating these distribution lists, we'll be uh, looking at a couple of different ways how we create these lists. One of the ways is um, to create it via the workspace menu, clicking on the new distribution list um, option, as you can see on my screen here. Or we can go into the context list itself and select the individual recipients and create a list from there. So we are at the context list screen. I can pick individual contacts that I need to put on the list. And I can simply click on create a list from the bottom of the screen. There we are. So we are at this uh, very simple um, user interface uh, of creating a distribution list. We're going to create different um, types of lists in this, um, in this section. Uh, for a start, I'll be going through the uh, various fields that you have available for yourself while creating this list. The first thing is how we name uh, the distribution list. Now, we recommend that you give it a name that is easy enough for the users uh, to comprehend at the point of sending a message. So for example, if the message is going out to fire wardens, the list would ideally call, be called a fire warden list. Or in this case, I'll be creating a list for trainers. Now, in the name itself, we also suggest you use a number to um, give it a selective priority. Otherwise, the list is automatically arranged in alphabetical order. Going into description, you would uh, put in a description that will give more information about this list to the sender of the message at the point of sending that message. So for now, I'll just use call it a training list. Now, this description is uh, visible from the point of sending the message um, from that screen. So hence, it is, uh, it is going to be useful that way. Now, looking at uh, the types of distribution list, this is probably the key to understand here. We can see three types of distribution lists. Static, which is created manually and managed manually. Then there are rule-based distribution lists, which are dynamic in nature. 
they change based on the uh, profile changes of the contact. Um, and then there is the shared distribution list, which can be shared across uh, different workspaces in Whisper. Hence, it could be useful if uh, you would like to um, allow other workspaces to look at this distribution list and, and use it. It is important to note in shared distribution lists that the list is visible. However, the contact details are not shared with other workspaces. So from a privacy point of view, you could still share it without actually um, leaving the privacy information out there. So we'll look at creating the static distribution list for a start. Now, access type for subscription. This is uh, related to our contact portal feature, um, whereby you can uh, restrict this distribution list uh, or allow it on the contact portal to be visible uh, for contacts. We'll probably go through our contact portal features in another session, so we'll look at it deeply there. For now, I'll keep moving. Location, we can always add a location to a distribution list, which basically means that this distribution list is then available in our maps module, and you are able to pick that distribution list um, from the maps and be able to send that message out. Ideally, when you give a distribution list a location, then all the attendees uh, or all the recipients of that distribution list uh, would be um, related to that particular location to keep it simple. So for now, I have got my recipients on that list. I can remove them, add them from the left-hand side to the right-hand side if, if needed. I also have the option to pick existing members of the platform or users, in other words. I can pick other distribution lists to be part of uh, this distribution list as well. As you can see here, or I can remove it as we go forward. Now, while we are on this uh, static distribution list creation, I'll also like to uh, go into a very useful feature of uh, escalations. So I'm clicking on add escalation list at the bottom of the screen. And there we are. So on the screen, I can add relevant um, contacts um, that will be sent a message if a message has not been replied to or acknowledged in a certain amount of time uh, when we first send it. Now, escalations can be set up at the distribution list level. However, they can be switched on or off at the point of sending the message as part of the message uh, sent features. So clicking on the distribution list, as I can see, I can add people on the list or remove them as we go along as needed, and then click save. There we are. So we've created a static distribution list called trainers. If I click on the list again, I can go back and check the list and I can make changes to the list if needed. There we are. Cool. Going back into the distribution list, I can manage the list from here. I can delete them for the sake of this training for now and create this list as a dynamic distribution list again. Okay, moving on. So I'm going into the new distribution list feature. And this time I'm going to create a dynamic distribution list. Okay, I'm going to give it a name again. And I'm going to pick it as a dynamic distribution list. Now, as you can see, we now have an interface where we can add rules. And those rules are quite useful um, as they will allow uh, you to pick information. Uh, from the contact profile or pick contacts on the basis of the information in their respective profiles. So for now, I can pick anybody in my organization that has an additional role of trainer. Here we are. So you can see I've got the respective contact come up as soon as I've picked the additional role as a trainer, and I'm going to save this.
there we are. Now, I'm also going to demonstrate how a change in a contact will reflect the change in that particular distribution list. As you can see, uh, I only had Casey on the list as a trainer. I'm going to go back into another contact and I'm going to edit that contact. And put additional role of a trainer in that contact. Cool. There we are. So I'm going to go back into my distribution list. And I'm going to click on an existing distribution list. And as you can see, I now have two contacts on the distribution list on the back of a change in the contact. So that's one of the major benefits of um, rule-based distribution lists um, as they automatically update uh, the list on the back of any contact profile changes. So if someone um, leaves the organization or joins the organization or changes roles, departments, then these distribution lists get automatically updated. Hence, they can be quite effective. Okay, moving on. I'm going to create another distribution list. Okay, so this time we're going to create a shared distribution list. So there we are. I'm now going to set um, the distribution list up with a rule whereby I'm going to call anybody that belongs to this department. There we are. I'm going to add them to the list. Now, it is useful to note here that uh, we need to pick the right field um, to call for a rule in the dis distribution list. Otherwise, we might not get the right set of individuals in that distribution list. So for now, I will save this shared distribution list. There we are. So we've got some more distribution lists in there. Now, that shared distribution list that we just created, the second one, I can select that distribution list and click on map distribution list from the bottom of the screen. Okay, I'm going to try it again. Okay, so basically, um, I wanted to demonstrate um, how this distribution list can then be provided to other workspaces that I as a user have access to. So in this account, we're obviously having some bandwidth issues uh, because of uh, having a lot of workspaces. However, this is how you would normally have the option of providing um, and mapping this distribution list that we've created as a shared distribution list to other workspaces. Okay, so these were uh, different types of distribution lists. I must also quickly show you the fourth type of distribution list, which was um, a temporary distribution list, which is created um, when we have sent a message by changing an existing distribution list or created an ad hoc list of uh, recipients. That distribution list is available under the temporary list, as you can see here, with the date and time available next to the distribution list. And this is available for a limited time, uh, but can be really useful uh, when you have to send another message to an existing list, which can also be done via uh, the recent feature 
through the message sending um, reporting screen. So there we are. 